Okay, let's do the regression side of this project now. I'm going to just scroll down and see what we need. Set up, state your research question. I stated that previously, and here it is. Uh, what if I start this on a new page? It's pretty close. That seems nice. Okay, state your research question. Should be conceptually related. Okay, we know that. Um, wait, what did I do? Oh, selected too many things. What is the association between the support a student received from their close friends while preparing for college and their academic self-efficacy in college? Now, friend support, CSEI, okay. And that's going to be called like, okay, I know. I looked this up, so it's still in my head. Um, I'm just leaving that here. And I'm, once again, I'm going to move this data set and variables above this because there, I'm going to put like a blank line there. That seems to make this easier with this software. I'm just going to move this up here. I'm going to identify the data set and variables first. Okay. Um, I will use the same data set as for my ANOVA. In my ANOVA, the, what did I call it? The student support data set. I did the ANOVA already. Let's go up. Um, I'm going to copy and paste that. I could probably just say same data set, but what if Dr. Rogers is grading these things separately and says like you didn't describe your data set what kind of a jerk would he be if he did that I better plan just in case or probably not jerk probably like exhausted um, let's see data set the 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 college student support data set from Dr. Rogers and then this is copying and pasting that same stuff but it says I will use the following variables for this analysis now EIS how did I do it before? I want to keep it consistent. Did I say the name and then the variable name? Like the conceptual and then the variable name? Okay, I said the variable name and then I defined that in conceptual terms. Okay. Uh, EISB um, a subscale score from the emotional intimacy scale in which or where participants indicated uh, how much um, academic or like I was like college preparation they received from their close friends. And this is a numerical variable. In case Dr. Rogers is wondering. And the next one is CSEI, score from the college self-efficacy scale. This is called the EIS. This is called the CSEI. I mean, even though I already said it, I, I'm just being extra careful. This scale measures students feelings of competency. Can I spell that? Competency regarding academic um, matters in college, such as their feeling of being able to um, achieve academic success, have successful social relationships, etc. Okay, so my hypotheses. Now this says uh, row for mother's education GPA because that's for my example. Got to change that. So let's see. Um, oh, also another numerical variable in case anybody. Numerical? Numerical. It should be numerical, but it's not. Why is English so inconsistent? Maybe I, should, maybe I put a period there. I don't know. Bullet lists, it's unclear. Okay, I'll leave that space. Row, I could just say row equals zero and row equals zero, but I'm going to do like row EISB um, CSEI just to make it clear that I'm awesome and I know exactly what I'm doing. Nope, that's print. Fine. 
we'll do it the hard way. Format, text, subscript. There we go. And I can just copy that, right? And I'm going to do clever things to make sure that it stays subscript here, like paste it in the middle of the already subscript and then delete what I don't need. Okay. Um, I actually think that this should be positive. I don't think that should be less than, and I should uh, change this. Um, what is the association? So in words, a hypothesis is a prediction. So I can say, I predict, I, I mean, I could say I predict that, that uh, close friend emotional intimacy scores, in other words, the EISB, will be positively correlated with self or college self-efficacy scores. Oh, I kind of just defined, I just used a conceptual, that's like the conceptual definition of my EISB, and this is there. Um, but I don't have to say I predict. I don't like that wrapping onto another line. Y you can say this, like, this is a prediction. So I made the prediction, and there it is in symbols. Okay. Now, X and Y, I think, I think the support is, happened first. I think the support is what, like, like influences college self-efficacy. Um, X equals EISB scores. Well, I can just say EISB because that's what it is in the data set. I'm going to do a shift enter so I can just do this nice and close together. Okay, and why is CSEI? Is that right? This affects this? I think so. Basic descriptive, mean standard deviation, and N, and histogram. So I think I can remember that. Let's go back to JASP. I'm using the same data set. You don't have to use the same data set. The other example doesn't. Uh, let's see. This has some stuff in here. I'm going to do E. Uh, EISA, EISB. And CSEI, oh, there we go. So mean standard deviation in N. So there we go, copy. It's regression, there's no groups, it's just the whole variable. Um, I don't think I need that word descriptive statistics there. That's a little distracting to me. EISB and CIS, CSEI, I, once again, I think three decimal places is too much. So I'm gonna round this to two. I mean, I don't think you lose points if you don't round it, but it sure is nicer if it's rounded. Okay, and then the histogram, histograms for each of them. Uh, let's see, I'm not going to do frequency tables, cause that doesn't make sense for numerical variables. You just get a crazy huge table. But I'm going to do distribution plots, which gives histograms. So I'm just going to copy, I found out, see how this all turned like shaded? I'm going to copy both of them, less effort. And it looks like they copy as separate objects in my on my paper. So I'm going to make these a little smaller. I'm at about four. I don't know. This isn't a class about perfect design principles. It's a class about statistics. They just need to be readable, understandable, neat, organized. OK, EISB, CISI. OK, that's really badly negatively skewed. That's a little bit negatively skewed. Now remember, there's no assumption about that. There's no condition about that for regression. But there is a, there is a different one. OK, straight line relationship. Refer to scatter plot. Uh, I'm going to put the scatter plot. up here because I'm going to refer to it so I'm going to I'm going to do like this like format painter to make that heading the same look the same as the other heading there we go like a little, maybe like a little, little space before I get it now I'm going to do the scatter plot using I'm over here in Jasper now visual modeling linear modeling now my independent variable is going to be my predictor that's x that's oh that's the EIS B and then the CSEI is my dependent variable. Okay, that actually doesn't look too bad, despite the skew. I mean, the skew is shown by how there's a lot of dots on the right and fewer as you go to the left, but that isn't necessarily a problem. 
skew isn't um, isn't a condition. I want to make this a little more. I don't know. Maybe maybe I will leave it like that. That's fine. Let me copy this. And I mean we have probably our stats down here, but I'm going to run regression anyway because sometimes these are different with the linear modeling thing. I'm not exactly sure why, so I don't trust them. They're usually the same though. Uh, let's see. My scatter plot is right there. It's probably going to jump onto the next page, so might as well just make that a whole new page. I might change this around later for my final paper to make it look ni nicer. Okay, linear straight line relationship. Honestly, I don't think a curve is better. I mean, you could imagine a curve kind of going down a little bit, but look how thick the stuff is here. These, these are like outliers. These dots on the very far right dribbling down towards the bottom. There's not very many of them. Many of them. There's still a ton of dots over here on the right. So I don't think there's a strong curve here. So, uh, uh, the scatter plot does not clearly suggest a curvilinear, that's a fun word, relationship. This condition is met. Normal residuals. I need a QQ plot or a histogram of residuals. Well, let's look at both and see if we need both or just one, if what feels good to us. So now we need to do our regression analysis and that's where the conditions happen. So I need correlation, linear regression. All right, uh, my covariate is my x variable, so once again that's going to be my EISB, and my dependent variable is the CSEI, the college self-efficacy score thingy. So here's my results. I'll look at those in a minute, but right now I'm going to look at statistics, model specification, plots, um, there we go. I want residual histogram for right now. Let's look at that. That's a little bit skewed. It's not horrible. I'm going to copy this because I need that for normal residuals. That's huge. Just for residuals plot, just for a condition. I don't need something to like, why, why do you sometimes do inline and sometimes not? Okay, I don't understand. Let's make some space here, move this back up into the space. Okay, whatever you got to do with your word processing software, mine. Um, and I would, that's not a horrible left skew or negative skew. Although the residuals are negatively skewed to a moderate degree, this does not look extreme I will period now that really isn't extreme if you just copy and paste this but your skew is extreme you're gonna lose some points because this isn't horrible there's still a nice little curve the tail to the left isn't that bad I will consider this condition met but I might revisit that later okay oops I like this being on another, I did a control Z there. Equal variance, residuals by the independence variable or residuals by predicted, um, residuals by dependent, residuals, okay, I'm going to do residuals by covariates. Any one of these is fine. Uh, I've shown you residuals by predicted in class, that's fine. I'm going to do residuals by covariate. And that's just basically like straightening out, like taking the regression line from the scatter plot and flattening it. Uh, I'm going to copy that here. Um, residuals versus EISB. So it's residuals by my covariate, by my independent variable, by my X. Okay, that's a little too big also. That's enough to see. Um, and once again, why do you do this to me? I can make this a little bigger, I guess. Now, I'm looking at this. This looks like it has a certain, it looks like the variance gets a little bigger going to the right, but you need it to get a lot bigger. I don't think this is a problem. Um, although the variability of the points around the regression line increases from left to right, it does not seem, 
and this is probably related to that skew by the way, not seem to do so to an extreme degree. I will consider this condition met. Now you would need a crazy trumpet shape. That's what you that's what's the bad thing. And this isn't a crazy trumpet shape. It's a little increasing. Like yeah. You could look you can do tests of standard deviation at different points. I don't think we need to. This looks okay. Okay, regression results. I need the table of regression value, the scatter plot. I'm just going to say C above because I already I already pasted it. Brief report of the hypothesis test. I'm just making some gaps so I can type stuff. I'm going to need to do all this. Okay, so table of regression values. That's where we start. Um, now, with our results, uh, let's see here. Oh, let's get down to where we were. Looking. Okay, we have our results. There are three tables. The bottom one is what we want, coefficients. That's the table of regression values. But pay attention to whether this is positive or negative. Anyway, you can do a separate thing to f with correlation to figure out the correlation, but it's right here, so I'm just going to use this. So pasting that. Um, I can leave coefficients in there if you want. I can leave model, but I don't want coefficients. I'm just going to delete that row. Okay, so all that stuff is there. I'm going to make this rounded to two decimal places instead of three because it's just extra busy. It's You don't need three decimal places almost ever in this kind of thing. Some people like it. I don't. I think the software does it because it's like we will give them more than they need. Well, I don't need that, so now I'm going to switch it back to just what I need. I hope I did that right. Okay, there we go. All this stuff is significant. Now, this is not my results. This is the null hypothesis model. We don't care about that. That's like, what if there wasn't even a predictor? What if we only had the y variable but no x? So I'm going to delete that. Delete that row. There, now, that is a nice table. It just has the information we need. It's readable. Um, that works. OK, so I've got the regression value, scatter plot, hypothesis test for r or r squared. Now this, we can just ignore it. As a matter of fact, I can do this. I can just delete that just to make my life easier because we're not going to look at that. I don't care. There is no standardized value for that, and there's no hypothesis test. Well, there is a hypothesis test. We just don't care. That's the intercept. What we care about is a hypothesis test for the what we call the regression coefficient, or B, or the slope, or B1, depending on what system you use. My alpha was 0.05, so less than 0.01. 0.001 is definitely le also less than 0.05. So we can say um, we reject the null hypothesis that the correlation between EISB and CSEI is zero in the population. We conclude that they are positively correlated. P is less p is less than 0.05. I know this says 0.001, but JASP is going to just give you the lowest value it can justify. You're the one who set your alpha, so you use your alpha. That was your decision. You keep, you stick with it. Okay, regression equation. Now, the regression is going to be like predicted y equals bx plus a, right? So what's our y variable is our y variable is, uh, it's not listed here, but we know that it is the CSEI scores equals B times, I mean, we can do times in a lot of ways. We can just put in parentheses, B times EISB scores, because that's our X, and that's right there, plus A. Okay, so which is B? B is the one that goes, okay, so this is B times EIS times our X, and so B times the X is right here on this one row, 0.72. No, no, come back. This is 0 0.72, really. I could put 0 0.72, that's fine. 0.7, um, I don't know, should I have a space between that? Is it more multiply if there's no space? I'm not sure. I'll put a space, people understand. Plus, is it is it positive? Do we have a positive intercept? We do. If this was negative, I'd do minus whatever. So plus 104.44. Now interpret B. 
then we have to remember that B is rise over run. It's the number of steps up or down in Y for every one step up in X. So N units up, down in Y for every one unit up in X. That's a way to think of this. Um, what are the units? It's just points because these are both just psychological scales like they're not dollars or gallons or anything it's just points and n units it's how many units it's 0.72 so 0.72 units is it up yeah that's positive up in y i'll change this as we go along up in y for every one point up in uh eisb and y is GPA, no, 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 it's not GPA, that was the other one. Um, wait, what are we f even studying again? What are my variables? Can't believe I forgot this, but I'm sure this will happen to you too. EISB, CSEI, okay. So we worked that out, so 0 0.7 points up in CIS, okay. So let me just rewrite this in a way that is m easier to read. For every one, point increase in EISB scores, our model predicts a 0 0.72 point increase, because it's up again, in CSEI scores. There we go. That's awesome. Now effect size, interpret R squared, R and R squared. Okay, either one is fine. Um, R equals, remember it's the standardized correlation, it's the standardized regression coefficient, so 0.18, it's the standardized B. So R is 0.18. Let me save this so I don't lose all my date, all my work. Um, R equals 0.1, oops, 1.8, which is, uh, oh man, I have to like look. I have it in the, hang on, I have it in another full folder. Would I have those? I, why did I delete those from these documents? It was so helpful. Hang on, hang on. I'm finding the, the uh, interpretation there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I've got to find this interpretation. Um, R, R squared. I'll just paste this in here for a second so you can see what I'm working with. Okay, are we back to the video example? We are. All right, so uh, I'm going to delete this in a minute. Small is 0.01, medium is 0.3. It's in between small and medium. I can say small to medium, that's fine. This is pretty rough anyway. A small to medium correlation. Okay, now some people do capital R. No. And now we interpret R squared. R squared equals, what is 0.18 squared? Oh, we can figure this out. Or we can go look back at JASP. JASP has this for us. I mean, once it's squared, like, it doesn't matter if the negative or positive happens. It's up here. Um, R squared, point not adjusted R squared, it's 0 0.032, 0 0.03. So 0 0.18, or you can just do punch 0.18 into your calculator and press the squared button. Oops, no. 0 0.03, no. Meaning that 3% of the variance in, what's our Y variable again? In CSEI scores can be accounted f for by, I could say the relationship between CSEI and ESB, but you can do a shorthand by EISB scores. That's fine. Now I'm gonna delete this because that was just so I could do the rules of thumb. Now I'm not gonna say small to medium for here again because it'll be exactly the same. The interpretation of this is give me that variance accounted for business. 
Okay, interpret overall results. Uh, I definitely want to do this. Okay, we reject the null hypothesis of no correlation between these variables in the population. Did I already do this? I think I kind of did. Brief report. Well, they're kind of same. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Why not? If it's in one or both places, it's probably fine. But I'm going to do it in both places, just in case Dr. Rogers is very tired when he's grading. We conclude that they are positively correlated. In other words, um, students' uh, experiences of college preparation support from close friends, the ISB, um, are weakly to moderately, I'm going on that, because it says this is a, that R is a small to medium, and I'm changing that to weakly to moderately. I could, I could say smallly to mediumly, but I did, that doesn't make sense to me grammatically, so I'm going to say meek weekly to moderately correlated with their um, college self-efficacy. And I'll put CSEI to remind people. Let me conclusion. Actually, maybe that's what the conclusion, conclusion should be. I think that's a conclusion more. I, I mean, I could put it there. Now, we need the general conclusion. What did we find? We found this, but let's go remember what we found with our ANOVA. With our ANOVA, we found what was our result, the number of jobs a student worked. I'm just going to copy this for a second because it'll be hard to remember all this at the end of this page, a couple of pages later. Now, in working this out, let's see. So we've got these things. I'm not going to leave these here. This is just so I can work on this. Um, I found that support for close friends is <coughs> correlated with college self-efficacy. And that, OK, so that's done. Delete that now. And that. Working versus not working, or that working in college, oh, let's see, whether you have a job, okay, the number, the number of jobs, what we really found was working versus not working, and then that two plus jobs is really unclear. Working versus, I think it's just relatively safe to say, not working while going to college effects, let's see, working, let's make this really specific, working while going to college negatively affects GPA. In both cases, um, experiences outside the university academic sphere were found to have an effect on, what did we say in the very beginning of this? Non-college variables associated with college experiences. OK. Effect, an effect on college experiences. That's it. I am done. That's an OK project. That would get probably an A. That's pretty good.